Behold, a faithful and prudent steward whom the Lord set over his household. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today we come together and we celebrate the solemnity of St. Joseph, the foster father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the espoused to the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Joseph is the great householder. He is he who is the pater familias of the Holy Family. And as such, I, in a very special way, ask all of our fathers out there to pray uh, that they take good care of their families during this time of the spread of the coronavirus. Now, calling our mind, to mind our sins and our failures, let us ask God for his forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginning you entrusted to his care, faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever, and I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The Son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The Son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. The Son of David will live forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. And for this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of, all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your house, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, we celebrate the solemnity of St. Joseph. And St. Joseph was an incredibly courageous and strong, brave man. He was a true man's man. As a carpenter, we know that he would have had great physical strength. But as a son of the house of David, he was also a man of great virtue and moral strength. He was a man of great faith. And I think that amidst the outbreak of the coronavirus, we need priests who bear the title Father, and all men who are the fathers in their household need to be strong. They need to be strong for their wives, first and foremost, because it is to them that they are married. And first and foremost, their marriage comes even before their children. And thus, they need to be good and strong, virtuous men for their wife to make sure that if their wife is dealing with fear at this time, justifiable though it may be, they should be a pillar of strength that provides a sense of confidence, faith, hope, and their love for their spouse should help remove that fear. They need to be strong for their children, to make sure that their children are being able to understand what is going on with the coronavirus, but also to be at peace, that they have a sense, again, of confidence, of hope, of faith, of having that love coming from their Father that shows them that they can be at peace, even though we must all be vigilant. We priests have a duty to be strong for our entire flock. And that means that at times we have to make hard decisions. That means at times we have to be humble, recognize that we've made mistakes, recognize that we always need to have and ask forgiveness. That's the reality of any true man. Because all of us, as men, are flawed. None of us is perfect. We could always do things better. And as a man, I know that at times, as your pastor, but as a priest in general, I could have always been a greater witness. I could have been a stronger witness. I could have been a better decision maker. But none of that matters so much as it matters that I ask for forgiveness, I dust myself off, pick myself up, and start all over again. Because that's the measure of a true man. A true man can recognize his faults and grow from them. It must have been difficult for St. Joseph, because in his household he had God himself and the Immaculate Virgin Mary. So if ever there was a mistake, if ever there was a sin committed, there was only one person who could bear that guilt. And Joseph recognized his flaws. Imagine having to ask his wife or his own son for forgiveness. But that was the power of the virtue of faith, hope, and love that existed in St. Joseph. And so on the solemnity of St. Joseph, and if you haven't been able to tell by the message of this homily, as Catholics, it's our way of celebrating, if you will, Father's Day because St. Joseph is the model of a father that we all must live up to, at least strive for. And when we fail, we can ask his intercession in our own lives as men, to be stronger men, to be men of greater virtue and character, and we can always look to St. Joseph as our model. God bless you. Let us profess our faith, and today we will profess it using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Raising our hearts and our minds to the Lord, let us now beseech his intercession. We pray for the whole church and the whole world, that it might be spared any greater harm from the coronavirus, that those who are sick might receive healing, that the medical professionals who are providing that healing might be protected, and that they might be successful in development of a uh, vaccine and a proper medication to deal with this coronavirus to provide true healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those of us in Sussex County who have now also joined the unfortunate ranks of having experienced our brothers and sisters in Vernon, Sparta, and right here in Frankfurt, New Jersey, who now have the coronavirus. We pray for those people that they might be healed and that they might be restored to health and that the rest of us might be spared. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for families, that they might be held together by the strong virtue of the husband and father. We pray to the Lord. We, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have gone before us. In a special way, we pray for Mark Brigham and all the holy souls in purgatory, that through the sacrifice of this Mass offered on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, patron saint of a happy death, a happy and holy death, that they might receive their eternal reward with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we ask you to hear and answer all of our prayers in the intercession of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and working hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work from hand, become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that mine and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, we give you fitting praise, 
to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Unceli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, soul, he went drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Francis, our Pope, and Arthur, our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, most especially Mark Brigham. <clears throat> Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Since it's safe with your own families, let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the sake of your act of making a spiritual communion with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, I'd like to pray the <clears throat> Anima Christi, the Soul of Christ prayer, attributed to St. Ignatius of Loyola. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, comfort me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From evil hosts, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come unto thee, 
that with thy saints I may praise thee unto the ages. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share your master's joy. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection. O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Again, I long to celebrate Mass with all of you back here at our parish. I am praying for you, and I'm praying for your safety, and I ask the same in return. Let us, in a very special way, keep each other in prayer, a great way of maybe as a family of celebrating St. Joseph. And men in general, this is just a good movie. It's by the Kendrick uh, brothers, Alex Kendrick also acts in it. Uh, the movie Courageous. It's a great maybe way of celebrating our Catholic Father's Day in a very spiritual and faith-filled May. <clears throat> I know I'll be watching it later. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix, Salve Porta, Ex Qua Mundo Lux Est Porta, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Superone speciosa, vale o vale decora, e pro nobis Christum exora. Allow me to praise thee, Holy Virgin. Give me strength against thy enemies. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, to our weak natures thy protection that we who commemorate the Holy Mother of God may, by the help of her intercession, arise from our iniquities to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Saint Rocco, pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. Saint Blaise, pray for us. Pope Francis' prayer for protection and help. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus. 
who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of those of us who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. <laughs> 